Hallelujah. Thank you, team. That was good. Amen. Everybody, you ready for the word? Get your Bibles. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe, I believe that faith comes, faith comes by, hearing, by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you for fresh impartation into our life, God. We thank you for what you've led us to, to, to say and what you will speak through us. God, we thank you for a fresh word in this season. Bless us to receive miracle signs and wonders in abundance. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Steps to a miracle lesson two. Steps to a miracle lesson two. And I think we stopped last time on focus your faith. And so, and being specific about your assignment and being specific about your prayer request, not praying scattergun praying. Lord bless me all the time, everywhere and every place. <laughs> Be specific. How many of you have specific needs? How many of you got specific desires? See, sometimes we think that God's only interested in our needs, but he's also interested in our desires. Amen? Some of your wants is, is some of his capability. It's in his power to give you some of your wants. Give you your wants. Amen? All right. All right. So, so, so pray like you expect him to do it. Amen? Pray like what? Pray like what? As we move into lesson two, the, the, the number four is, if you need one through three, it's on a, uh, on a CD in the back. Uh, <laughs> number four is, choose a prayer partner. It's important that as you walk in the Lord and, and in the kingdom, that you have a prayer partner. This is not the same as a gossip buddy. It's a prayer partner. Somebody that you can share your prayer desires and wants and needs and, 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 and they can pray them with you. It's a principle that we're operating in and it's a principle that the church overlooks because we don't recognize the inherent power that, that's in uh, 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 praying with somebody. We, 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 we need to understand what, what agreement is about. And agreement is so key to getting stuff done. When Pastor Barbara was going through her, her, her issue with needing a new hip, her church, uh, 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 the, the, the ministers of their church called a fast time together that was inclusive of Thanksgiving Day. They fasted Thanksgiving. Lord, help. Thanksgiving Day for her, pre-surgery, the day of surgery and afterward. And they didn't tell you what kind of fast, but fast something. The, and the power of agreement, the next thing we saw. See, I like a before picture and an after picture. And the next thing we saw, here comes a, a text with a picture of her standing. Which means that that prayer of agreement worked. 
and she was released the next day. Now, walking in faith, she had cooked her Thanksgiving dinner to eat, I guess, Friday. I don't know. That before she went into the hospital. Amen. You have to keep moving. I think I said something there. Until your miracle shows up. Sometimes you think because you're going through, that's the time you need to stop. That may be the time you need to keep pushing through. Turn to somebody and say, keep pushing through. Amen, amen. Choose a prayer partner. You cannot trust everyone with your private thoughts or problems. Let's start there. That's wisdom. You can't trust the neighborhood town crier with all your stuff. Amen? All right. But you need someone. I want to tell you, here is a thought and here is a truth. One cannot multiply. One cannot multiply. One cannot multiply. Not one anything. It is against nature. One cannot multiply. Did you hear me? Oh, my God. Two is the secret to multiplication. It's scriptural. Two is the secret to how many? And then don't get crazy and add two or more. Jesus introduced the former formula for prayer power. It's called the power of agreement. Don't ignore it. Matthew 18, 19 through 20. Matthew 18, 19 through 20 says, Again, I say unto you that if two of you, how many two. of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. Let's stop there. Touching anything. Y'all need to write anything in your notes real large. Anything. That they shall ask, it will be done. That's what shall is, it's old English. It will be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. And Jesus identifies where his daddy is because that's where all the resources are that can transfer to the earth, but it, but, but it starts in heaven. And then it goes on to say, where two or three or four or five or six or seven are gathered together in whose name? What did he say? I am there in the midst. Once the power of agreement goes into place, he steps in to become the un uncountable number that you need to get what you need. And you need somebody to join you, but you got to be saying the same thing. You want victory, get with somebody else that has a victorious attitude. Hook up with them. And then Jesus said, I can join you there because that matches the will of the Father that he has through me for you. Does that make sense? That's why we come together and pray. Because there's power in agreement. And Satan tries everything to keep you from coming together. Because if, if you come together, he knows you're going to give him a nasty fit. You're going to give him a headache. But you stand there, I can do this all by myself, and you get knocked out every chance you get. Maybe you need another person with you to help hold you up while you're praying. Come on. Dora needs a jam. She may not think so all the time, but she needs a jam. You, you, you need each other. Amen. D don't play. Don't act like you you just you all of that by yourself. I, I'm a powerhouse. I'm anointed in eco all by myself. Get you some business. God created this thing so that we would have to lean on each other as we trust Him. That's why you need godly alliances. People of what the scripture call like precious faith. They believe. And you can lob something with them. They don't say, 
You know, you crazy. I don't know. I don't know about that. Leave them alone. <laughs> Everything you bring up, you know, somebody else did that. It didn't work out good for them. You know, somebody else had that. They all, everybody I know had that, and they read about they died. <laughs> Leave them alone. <laughs> le- 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 just get on. Uh, just, just say, hey, amen. God bless you. Check you out a little later. <laughs> just go on, get away from them, you know. You ain't got to get mad, ain't got to get attitude, but you, uh, oh, uh, uh, I don't need that in my, in my spirit. I got to find somebody that can agree on godly stuff with me. Because I need godly results. To get godly stuff, I need somebody to understand how to, how to, how to, how to operate in godly stuff. Amen? All right, all right. Let's, let's keep moving. Matthew 18, 18 through 20 in the Amplified. And, and the message says it this way. I just wanted to make, 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 make this point. Take this most seriously. A yes on earth is yes in heaven. A no on earth is no in heaven. What you say to one another is eternal. Come on. Isn't that good? I mean this. I mean this. (laughs) When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. I love that. And when two or three of you are together because of me, You can be sure that I'll be there. You need assurance that Jesus is going to show up. You better hook up with somebody. And that comes your assurance that Jesus is there. Isn't that good to anybody but me? Jesus Christ. Number five. Sow a miracle seed. Some of you want a miracle, but you don't want to sow to get one. Sow a miracle seed. Let me tell you what it is. We're going to expand it for some of you. They're getting nervous. You think it's always about a dollar. Your seed is anything you do that helps somebody else. That's a seed. It's called good works. That's a seed. So you want good to come back to you, you get involved in some good works. You shouldn't be the recipient of your own uh, charitable organization all the time. You're the only benefactor. You give out a grant and it go to you. <laughs> Amen? Amen? All right. Ah, oh, man, I got one. It may be information. So see the information. Sometimes you have stuff that can help somebody. I ain't telling them nothing. I'm going to keep this to myself. Ooh, you, you never thought about that, did you? So, so seeds of information. If you know something that's going to help, write it down. Get it to them. You know somebody that can help them, write it down. Get them to Get them a resource. Say, hey, hey, go do this. Go to, leave that alone. This will work. And then be trustworthy enough to say, tell them I sent you. I've gotten some stuff from people because my name was there. I sent you. How many have gotten blessed because somebody gave you a good tip? And I'm not talking about a number. I have to be careful because people do something for everything. I can't say flower too long because somebody will box it, you know. (laughs) Somebody just said, I'm going to do it today. Just because. And if you hit, you better. Well, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I I, I digress. Low down rascals. <laughs> Sow seeds of encouragement. That's a seed, y'all. Learn how to encourage each other. So, see somebody going in, they ought to get beat up. Then you say, whoop them, Jesus. 
<laughs> no, sow seeds of encouragement. You let God do the judging. I think sometimes when we get mad at people, we, 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 we want everybody else to whoop us. Let, let God do that. You just keep loving. You stay on the loving side. Amen. Sow seeds of encouragement. Or even finances. Here's that, that one that, that we dread a lot. Sow some, some finances somewhere. Do something. Give. That's a good idea. That's not a nasty four-letter word. Give. Why God bless you and you don't give? It ought to be just natural. You need to sow that because you, you will never be God given. And with that thought, no matter what you give, it will never be what he can return back to you. Amen. Given, it shall be given to you. That's a promise. Good measure. See, I want the kind of money that can't fit in the container no more. You go to press it down, you cannot get any more in. And it said where, where it's going to come from. Well, you're going to operate in the principle that God said, but God's going to activate the, the word in the earth. And it said, will men give into your bosom? Which means they'll start stuffing it in your, 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 your chest pocket. The pocket on the inside of your garment, they'll start filling it up. Whatever it is, your seed is always your door out of trouble. Your seed is your door out of trouble. 90% of your problems and headaches would go away if you had some money. Your headache would go away. Your toe would stop on hurt. Your blood pressure would get regulated. I ain't been this regular. What happened? All my bills paid. <laughs> my heart ain't palpating anymore. When does it palpate? On due date of every bill. <laughs> Palpitate. Come on. Stress. I'm not even stressed. I can lay down and sleep. I don't have to shuffle. What time the morning is this? And it'll be good to know that you got more money than mom. Job sold a prayer of deliverance for his three friends. Then God turned Job's captivity around. These are the same friends that showed up. At first they were encouraging. Then they said, okay, can we talk? What did you do? David stopped the tragedy by offering a special offering to the Lord. And I'm going to deal with that. Here is the background to that story, and then we're going to run to that scripture. Don't put that scripture up until I, until I get down there. David numbered the people, and God let them number them. He said, go on, do it. Remember, that's how David became king. Now, David was the king that the people that God wanted. Saul was the king that the people wanted. And when they asked for a king, he let them have Saul. He said, but he's going to take your money, he's going to take your daughters, he's going to take so sometimes God will give you what he asks, what you ask for. That's not necessarily what he wants for you. Oh, that's not good. So here it is in here again. David numbered the people. He numbered the people. It was against the purpose of God for Israel. He numbered the people. And God led him. His generals questioned the decision. Why are you numbering the people? They numbered everybody from one boundary to the other, cross, backward, every which way, until they had a number. Basically, we get the number of all the men and not the women and children. But he numbered them. David realized later, because condemnation hit, that he had sinned. But God sent the prophet Gad to tell him that the Lord was giving him three penalties of his sin, take your choice. You know it's rough when God says, pick one. Pick one.
Pick one that I can judge you and, 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 and inflict you with. Pick, pick one. I'm, I'm going to give them to you because the, the scripture bad, y'all. He said, pick one. I'm, I'm going to do one of them. You, you pick. <laughs> this is the sentencing buffet. <laughs> you, you pick. Isn't this mind-boggling? Number one, seven years of famine on the land. Ooh! Do you know how long, what one month of famine would do? Number two was, you'll be running from your enemy for 90 days. That means every day, all day, you'll be, you running. Somebody coming. You try to nod off and you hear footsteps. For 90 days. <laughs> he didn't say they'd be after you just in the morning. That's the Bible, y'all. I'm, I'm going to give you the passage and you, you can read the whole story. It's bad. And the third one. The third one, three days of plague. Now, the difference between plague and famine is that in famine, you may live. But in plague, people get sick and start dying immediately. Plague. Three days of plague. Pick, your, pick which one you want. <laughs> Can anybody decide which one you'd like? I think the 90 days running... I don't know, but the, I, I just want to play with y'all a little bit with that. With the 90 days, kind of. Because number one is too long. I'm hungry now. <laughs> and that last one, that death thing. God, I'll be tired, but I'm be running. David couldn't pick and said, Lord, I just surrender myself to your hand. You know, we try to beg on off, like he's going to change his mind. And he did not change his mind, so he just said, I'll pick. And he picked the third one. And folks started dying. Y'all going to let God pick? We play it like he ain't going to ever pick. Okay. Let me go on because I want you to stay happy. Then David repented of his sin. He repented. Repentance is a good word, y'all. It can stop a lot of bad stuff. Come on. Come on. Go on and repent. Say sorry. Don't have too much pride because something may kick in if you don't. Go on and repent. It's good today. Go on and say sorry. I messed up. If something twins you, you don't have to ask nobody, was that wrong? You know it's wrong. <laughs> Amen. Then David repented of his sin in prayer and asked the Lord to strike Strike me and my family. Don't, don't kill everybody else. In life. That's what was happening. The people were dying. The problem was, you might not understand when David picked and, and numbered the people, you might not understand from the scripture what that problem is. The problem is you chose statistics rather than trusting God. And sometimes you trust what's in your hand rather than what he promised to give you. And you don't release it because you trust that. You trust your job more than you do the one who gave the job. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And at some point, you need to repent that I didn't place you first. <laughs> Come on. Anybody still in the room? David prayed, and the same prophet, Gad, that came and brought him the news and brought him the choices, he came back to him, and he said, build an altar and make a sacrifice. 
So David, in turn, had to go and find the land and place where he could get build the altar. And so he went to uh, uh, Aronar's field. And, and, and he found that place and he said, I'm going to buy the land from you. I, 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 when he showed up, the owner said, hey, 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 you're the king. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to let you have it. You can have this and the land that's attached to it and all the cattle you need. You, I, I'm going to give it to you. But, 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 but see, I'm talking about sowing something. And so David later on after our key scripture that I'm going to give you in a minute, he said, I can't offer to God something that costs me nothing. So he ended up buying the land for 50 shekels, which is $500 in today's money. But he had to buy it because he had to sow something. To stop the plague, he had to give something in to pull something out. Maybe if you want death to stop, you need to do something to bring life in. Oh, you're not in the room today. Does that make sense? So he, he, he bought the, the threshing floor, which incidentally later became the place where the temple was built. So the foundation was sold when David stopped the plague. It became a place of blessing. And later on, Solomon built the temple that the, his daddy David had gotten the plans for on that same plot of land. Yes. God has a purpose for everything. Yes. David brought the land, sacrificed the oxen, and our scripture says in 2 Samuel 24 and 25, and it says, And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offering, so the Lord was entreated, begged, God, heal the land for the land. And when David did that, the next verse says this, and what happened? It's up there on the screen. From where? place that you had counted, it was withdrawn because of a seed of an altar for 50 shekels. And you made sacrifice to God. And the sacrifice was saying, I trust you more than I do my count. Sometimes when you're trying to count it up and make it fit, it might not be what God wants. And it might not be enough. Wow. Are y'all out there? Yes. David had to sow something to get something. When you let go of what is in your hand, God will let go of what is in his hand. When you let go. You want something? Give something. Sow something. Everything is a seed. Everything is a seed. Everything. How many things? Everything. Is a seed. Don't act like anything you do is too much. Everything is a seed. It also works in reverse. If you hateful all the time, that's a seed. The wind is a seed. Thank you, Lord. If you sow the wind, the Bible says you'll reap the whirlwind. Everything is a seed. Six, expect miracle. We aren't seeing them because you don't expect them. Expect miracle. You have listened. You have heard and understood. You have obeyed the instruction of God. Now expect a miracle. You got information. Expect it. You've seen where it happened. Expect it. I have found that the miracles of God often come from an unusual response. Y'all keep thinking that it's all nice and neat and packaged. Sometimes it comes raggedy. Okay, we're going to talk about it right now. The blind man who allowed Jesus to put gritty mud in his eyes. It wasn't only gritty, it was spitty. 
gritty, spitty mud. Some of y'all so nice, nasty. <laughs> don't, don't put that on me. Stop laughing, Annie. Don't put that on me. But you need a miracle. <laughs> what was the girl in, in, in different world when, when she was getting married to Mary Dwayne Whitley Gilbert? When 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 it was time when Dwayne showed her with that ring, he, she said, Put that on me, Dwayne, put that on me. <laughs> <laughs> When you need a healing, just tell God, put that on me, God. Put. <laughs> oh, you stay hurting long enough, just put it on me. <laughs> John 9, 6 through 7, just in case you think I'm off my, out of my mind today. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. That's some fancy word for spit. <laughs> and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. How many of you know see? That seeing is a lot better than that muddy spit. Put on me, Jesus. However you need to bring it to me, put, put on me. <laughs> well, I think there's another, I, my, my, my humor kind of kicked in. I said, he was blind. He didn't know what hit him. He, just, he, he didn't see Jesus spit on the ground. Because I think sometimes we see too much. And if we see, we can't receive. Come on, I think I just said something. He, he just know that he, he couldn't see nothing. Something, something was on his face dripping down. That's why sometimes when we were sick, our parents would have to disguise the medicine. Bring us something and have some sugar with it or something. Take this first and then we're going to follow it with this. I fell for that trick one time. I don't want no more. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I don't even want the sugar. Uh-uh. Or the honey. How many of you know what I'm talking about? His unusual response brought a quick response from God. Number, here's another one in case you, you didn't believe that one. The deaf man with a speech impediment that allowed Jesus to put spit. Jesus sure operated in a lot of spit, didn't he? Jesus put, now this was really, somebody might say, now this is too nasty. Jesus put spit from his own mouth into his mouth. Y'all looking, y'all. <laughs> Come on, let's say, our, let's, let's make our statement. Put on me, God. <laughs> Come, come on, come on. This is in your Bible. <laughs> come, open wide. Come on. <laughs> Some of y'all just say, I, I stay there. I stay there. Mark 7, 32 to 34, so for those of you who don't believe that I'm talking right here today. Then they brought to him one who was deep and had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to put his hand on him because they, they could receive a hand. That's all clean. Just lay your hand on me. There ain't nothing on your hand. They can see your hand. You know, you know. Like y'all. 
But if I dare would do this. Or just get a good old hawk or something. <laughs> All right, Yvonne. Straighten up. <laughs> I was thinking about the time that Pastor Marcy and then I'm going to read this scripture was getting, she had gotten ordained. And you know, Corletta Harris, she just on the edge. She's over the edge. You know, just out of it. She's just gone. And, and, and you know, people like to dab a little oil and we have she had on this nice white suit, and, and, and we had all dialed up for the day. Had her hair done and all that kind of stuff. And we put the towels on, and, um, and she started pouring that oil <laughs> and started dumping it. It went everywhere. And some of the altar people started getting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and wiping her off and stuff. And Corletta said, it ain't dirt. <laughs> God uses unusual stuff. And he don't care about the mess it seems to make. To get you out the mess. See, the thing is, you got to get delivered. You got to be anointed for what you got to do. I, we don't care where it's dripping. We don't care how it looks. We don't care if it run down your drawer. As long as when, 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 when everything is over, you can see and you can hear. Yeah. Yeah. Are you out there? Yeah. Oh, but we're so nice, nasty. We're terrible with that. But God don't care. They brought to him the one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. Mark 7, 32 to 34. New King James Version. And they begged him to put his hand on him, and he took him aside because he knew the crowd would be grossed out. <laughs> he took him aside from the multitude, put his finger in his ear, and he spat and touched his tongue. Anointed spirit. <laughs> but come on. Come on, because some of your miracles are going to come through some unusual. Oh, you don't know when it's coming. It'll be unusual. It'll be out the box of what you thought it was going to be like. But on the other side of it, you have the, and what you want is the, come on, come on, come on. Give God a praise in this house. You already know what the usual response to this would be. Don't you even dare to do that. I'm deep but not crazy. However, we are forced to see that the unusual response of allowing another person's spit to be put into our mouth brings total healing. I'm going to give you the third one of this as, 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 as far as expecting a miracle. The third one. The church, the first church split ever recorded involved an unusual response. That was a miracle occurring. Here it is from John 6, 46 through 58. And this is what Jesus said, and I'm just, just hitting parts of that. I'm not reading all of that, but just listen to Pastor Reverend and read that. He who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood dwells continuously in me and I in him. That's trip out language. Because you're telling a group of people, eat what? <laughs> Drink what? What kind of cannibalistic pagan cult is that? Come on, think like people think. Eat what? Drink what? Then I'm with you? Does that make us blood brothers and sisters? I yes. Yes. Ooh. Many of them say this is a hard, difficult, and strange message. Translation. 
he cracks. <laughs> you cray cray. You lie. Who can be expected to listen to such teaching? After this, many of disciples went back. See, when you don't, can't expect what God can do supernaturally because it don't match your thinking, you can't receive it. So the first thing you do, instead of saying, put on me, God, you, you walk away from what would bless you because your mind can't handle it. Are you out there? Jesus turned to, that was some of the disciples. He called everybody that followed the disciples. But he turned to the 12, his chosen one. He said, he said, he said, okay, brothers, let's get real with this thing. Will you also leave me? Are, are you also going to do the same thing? See, Jesus didn't play with them. I, I ain't acting like y'all all the way in. If you're going to leave, get to step. He didn't stop them. Don't go. He just want to know where they going. Maybe I can give you bus fast. Or mule fast. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> Some of y'all caught that real quick. But Simon Peter said one of my greatest lines in the scripture. He said, to whom shall we go? Lord, you have the words of eternal life. See, that ought to be the sticking point. Where are we going? You got the key. You it. Where can we go but from you and, and you got eternal life? That's all he want to know is are you sold in? Or are you ready to get out? He just want to hear a, 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 a revelation inside of you that, that sparks him to say, to, to God, God, now you know, where are we going from you? Because you got eternal life. Come on. That's the stand of the believer. That's the way you ought to be anchored. We ain't going nowhere. You the one that's got the plan for everlasting life. What are we doing? We ain't going nowhere from you. I know this is a hard saying, but we'll get used to it. Chew, 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 swallow, swallow, swallow. We in this thing. And 2,000 years later, chew, 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 swallow, swallow, swallow. We do it every first Sunday. As often as you do this, you do show forth my death, my burial, my suffering until I come again. And when I come again, I will receive you unto myself. Munch, munch, munch. Yes. Swallow, swallow, swallow. <laughs> Last one. Never give up. Never give up. If you want a miracle, don't give up. Don't give up until you got the miracle. Then you ain't got to give up. You just take it in. There is one other key to your miracle heart is never giving up believing in the manifestation or the appearing. Manifestation, fancy word for appear of your miracle. Luke 18, 1 through 8, and it says this. Pastor coming on around to being on this. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. That's, that's good right there. How often? Always. How often? Always. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God. He was a godless man. You need to paint this picture around this godless man. But he's, he's a character in the story. Nor regard man. That means he was wicked, he was godless, and he acted up on people. But he was a judge. He's the kind that you don't want to see in traffic court. Are y'all out there? 
Does that make sense? Now, there was a widow. Everybody say a widow. In that city, and she came to him, him, the mean judge, saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. I'm not doing nothing. What did I tell you? But she kept saying, get justice. I'm not. Go on about your way. Bailiff, come get her. Get justice, she screamed. Do, do y'all see it? Everybody say, you keep doing it until you get these words. But afterward, he said within himself, she had got in his head. Though I do not fear God, and I ain't thinking about no man. I ain't thinking about God or man. Yet because this, this widow troubles me. I will avenge her. Lest her continual coming, she weary me. Keep wearying. Keep asking. Until you get it. I don't care what it is. Keep getting on them until after a while you ain't only in their ear, you're in their head. And when they try to sleep, they have to think about you. And I'm going to grant their request because I don't want her to come back and say, I need release from mine adversary. Blessings to you this morning. My God, my God. Ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on asking. Keep pressing in. Keep pushing in until you get it. Put them hands up in the air and keep pressing in. Pressing in. Come on, come on until you get it. Ooh, keep pressing. Hey! You don't have it yet, but that don't mean it's not coming. Come on, keep pressing. Keep telling them about it. <laughs> it's right here until you get it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's right here. I sense it in this room. Hallelujah. don't know what you got today. You got a walking rain of word today just for your life. So while your hands up, sow in a praise to him. Come on, give, give him a good praise in this room. Oh, come on, give him a praise. Open your mouth. Oh, God, God. Put your hand on your chest and say, I will have my miracle. have it now. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together and give them a good praise. Oh, you're not happy enough. 